Hello everybody, welcome to the class. Vamos a esperar siempre some minutes just for the other people to come to the class. But welcome anyways. Okay, teacher, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, classmate. Good evening, welcome. Hello, good evening, teacher. Good evening, good evening partner. Hello, hello.
Okay, everybody, welcome to the class again. We're back in business. So how are you? How was your week off? Did you enjoy? Did you rest? Did you sleep? Did you go to the beach? How was it? Tell me. Okay, teacher, in my case, I have, I, I, I are in my house, rest, and I work also. Okay, good. Me too. I didn't have any vacations, only English. But in my job, I, I had a regular job. The good thing is that I, I went to bed very early, right? I slept very nice. So that was pretty good. <laughs> okay. Anybody else wants to share? In my case, teacher, I was rest. Um, I I was in my house. I am happy. <laughs> yeah, that's good. In my I house. <laughs> yes, I rest um, uh, since Wednesday. It's okay. okay it was okay. I am. Um, how do you say repuesta? Recovered. Recharged. <laughs> Recharged. Okay. Recharged. Yeah. Good. That is good. Thank you for. Yes. Okay. Anybody else who wants to share? In my case, teacher, I was resting at home. The I have nine days to rest. Yeah. Yeah. On yeah. mm -hmm. um, Monday, Tuesday, I was cleaning every corner in my house. <laughs> Good, yes, I was cleaning. Then I watched TV. Um, on Saturday, uh, we went to Wataku with my daughter and and her friends. And we enjoyed. Pretty good. It sounds yeah. like you spent very nice. Yes. That's a nice time. Perfect. That's good. That's important thing. Good. Anybody else wants to share? Did you eat all that food that you said that you were going to eat? More or less. Yes, I eat torrejas. Good. I eat cocotes, but not in miel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mangos. Yeah. Mm. Tamales. Oh my God. I am only kidding, kidding, kidding. <laughs> That's good. Yes. <laughs> Very good. That is nice. It's nice to be back again in the English class. Well, this is the last week. So if you have the time, move on with the platform. Actually, that is what we're going to check first. Remember that by Friday, this Friday, uh, we need to, to finish everything in the platform. Oops. So we are in unit four already. And uh, this is the class of today. And this is already there, the question for today, OK? So, and by the end of the, the week, we have to finish everything, the whole platform. So if you still have missing some things on unit one, two, or three, just have the time. And also remember that we need to finish everything by Friday. In, before the class of Friday, everything has to be done. So that is very important. Of course, as usual, we're going to check the attendance. So let's see how it goes. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Ophelia Orellana Arce. Here, teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solorzano. 
Present teacher. Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening, present. Good. Good evening. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Good evening, teacher. Present. Good. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good. Okay, so we are going to start. Maybe I have a question for you. Did you practice English in this week? One day, one hour? Five minutes. Yes, teacher. Of course. I watch, I watch TV. <laughs> Very yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you I know. I miss. I miss the class. Really, I miss the class. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah, but I listen to the the TV, the series, the movies. Definitely, there are many things that you can do, right? I mean, I like not... I like some some series on Netflix, but. Oh no, in Spanish, no, no, English. I need English. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, much that's better. true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Good, perfect. So, yeah, I mean, you can practice in many ways, right? Music, with movies, with TV shows, with YouTube videos. There are many things that you can do so you can continue practicing English. It's not that you are going to be studying grammar and all those things, but it's good. It's good. So, we're going to start today, uh, unit four. Oh, this got stuck. Oh, okay, here is it. And we are going to start with adverbs to qualify verbs. So that's what we're going to check. We're going to start with a little bit of grammar. This grammar is not difficult, it's very easy. And then we're going to start with the book, of course. So, um, Sandra, could you please read the first paragraph here? Okay, teacher. What is other? Okay. An other is a word that describes a verb, just like adjectives. Others are used to add detail to a sentence. More specifically, adverbs tell us how when or where something happened. Very good. So, so the first thing is what is an adverb? So an adverb is a word that describes a <clears throat> verb. Sometimes also describes other adjectives or other adverbs, okay? So just like adjectives, adverbs are used to add detail. So we are describing something. Uh, Add detail to a sentence. More specifically, adverbs tell us how, when, or where something happened. So it's because it's an action, right? So it's describing how something happened, when something happened, or where did it happen. So it's kind of very easy to be honest with you. Do you have any questions on the first one? No, it is clear for me. Very good. Okay, the next one is going to be for Jancy. Please read the next one. In the man started keeping his life into her eyes. In the example above, the word he played describes how he was starting. So the play is uh, an adverb. In this sentence, it means 
he has starting in a deep this way. If this starting had been here, we could have said he has starting terribly. Very good. So we have Where a sentence here. I'm sorry. The play. We're going How to check into that one. Okay, so the first sentence, this is like a, an example. The man stared deeply into her eyes. So the first question is stare. What is to stare? Stare. Stare. I was, uh -huh, I was looking in is is when someone is looking you the fix how do you say fijamente fixed fixed uh -huh. fixed yeah very good somebody else is also was going to say Sulma no I think is the verb start in past form that is it yeah so steer Stare is when you are looking with detail, something that you are, you are looking and you continue looking for, for a time. So for example, when you are, I don't know, when you are looking food, delicious food and you look and you say, oh my goodness, and you look and look again and look again. So you stare, you stare, it, it means that you are seeing something fixed for a period of time. So you are looking at something. So that is it, that is it. And deeply, uh, anybody knows what is deeply? No teacher. No, nobody? It's like well, deep, you know. is deep. Yeah, it's deep, right? It's like in this case, it's not that you are going to go deep into something, but it's like serious, the, the topic or important the topic. Is it's like to profoundly. Okay, something yeah. like that. Very good. That is it. In this case, it says the man stared deeply into her eyes. It's like a, like a romantic thing, right? So it's like you're looking into the other person's eyes and you are like, my goodness, this is so good. So I don't know. So that is it. Deeply is a description of stare. And of course, stare is a verb. So that is it. And it says in the example above, the word deeply describes how he was staring. So how? That is the description of this adverb. So deeply is an adverb in this sentence. It means he was staring in a deep way. So he was paying attention to every detail, right, in her eyes. Uh, if his staring had been weird, do you remember what is weird? Weird something strange. Strange. Uh -huh. So when he says the man stared deeply into her eyes is because the two people, the two person involved, they are nice with the situation. But maybe maybe there is a situation when a man is staring at you and you don't like it. Uh, a woman don't like it. So that is weird. So we could have said that he was staring weirdly. So we can change the adjective, I mean the adverb, so we can describe how the situation was. That is like the um, main purpose of an adverb. Do you have any questions on this one? If you know how deep is your love. What is weirdly, teacher? Uh, weirdly. Weirdly, yes, yes. Okay, weirdly is the adverb of weird. So we can transform uh, weird uh, into weird. Weird is adverb, okay. Uh-huh, we can make some magic there, good. Okay, let's continue. So it says using adjectives and adverbs. 
Okay, but what is the difference? Okay, Gloria, could you please read the first part? Okay, you say, uh, you know, you know adjectives? Yes. Yes, please. Okay, you know adjectives and adverbs are both words that describe sometimes, but uh, for many people, these words are also um, easy to mix up. Thankfully, there are some simple rules that will help you know which and which, which, which is which, and, after, and when to use them. Okay, perfect. So that, that happens sometimes. Sometimes we get confused. So is this an adverb or is this an adjective? So that happens. It says, do you know adjectives and adverbs are both words that describe something? So adjectives and adverbs are used to describe something. But for many people, these words are also easy to mix up. Thankfully, there are some simpler rules that will help you know which is which and when to use them. Uh, Ada, could you please read the next? Okay, look at the context. If you're not sure whether to use an adverb or an adjective, try to figure out what you're describing. Remember, adjectives are used to describe nouns, which means they can explain what kind of thing you have. You have how many things you have or which thing you're talking about. Please continue, continue. with the other. Yeah, please. Okay. Albert, on the other hand, are used to describe verbs, which means they can explain how something happened, when something happened, or where something happened. Very good, perfect. So, uh, yes, uh, we can differentiate between one and the other. So if you're not sure whether to use an adverb or an adjective, try to figure out what you are describing. So that is the first tip. What are we describing? Remember, adjectives are used to describe nouns. So chair, uh, the name of a person, uh, house, a table, things like that which means they can explain what kind of thing you have. So for example, big, pretty, expensive, those are adjectives. How many things you have? We have three mangoes. We have uh, five computers. Or which thing you're talking about? That thing, those things, the black things. So that is adjective. Adverbs, on the other hand, are used to describe verbs, which means they can explain how something happened, when something happened, or where something happened. So as you can see, they are very different, not the same. So that is the first step. Do you have any question on this? Okay, so let's move on. Look at the ending. Nelson, could you please help me reading this? Okay, teacher. Look at the ending. You might have already noticed the many adverbs end with the letter. Like, if you see a word the end in like, there is good change. It's a, an adverb not an adjective. Can you use this rule to tell what's wrong with this sentence? Very good. So you might have already noticed, it says, that many adverbs end with letters L, Y. So many, look, at, look what it says, many, not all, many, right? Many adverbs end with the letters L, Y. If you see a word that ends in L-Y, there's a good chance it's an adverb, not an adjective. 
okay? So that is it. That is it, that you are going to notice the most, not the most, but many adverbs, they finish in L-Y. Okay, and here we have an example. Let's see, um, Carla, could you please read this one? Hydro quip because it doesn't have an le ending. You may have guessed that quick is an adjective. However, this sentence is correct because an adjective can be used to describe a verb draw. To make this sentence correct, we could change the adjective to an to an adverb he drove quickly. Now the sentence describes how he was driving. Very good. So this is a very good example. Okay, so he drove quick. Quick is an adjective. And here is not correct because we are describing the action that is drive in past drove. So because it doesn't have an LY ending, you might have guessed that quick is an adjective, as we said before, right? Quick is an adjective. However, this sentence is incorrect because an adjective can't be used to describe a verb. So it's not correct. To it's make sure this, it, uh -huh. I'm sorry, in this case, in quick, uh, it doesn't describe the driver. No, in this case, it's describing the verb. Uh, you can say he is, he is quick. If you say he is quick, yes. Okay. You are okay. describing the driver. But okay. he, uh -huh. in this sentence, yeah. the action is what we're describing. He drove quick uh, and then it's not correct. Okay, in this case, he is quick, it's adjective. It's adjective because it's describing he. The person. The he, person. Uh, uh, okay. Thank you, teacher. It's a pleasure. So you can see why this is very important, right? It's very important to understand the difference between adjectives and adverbs so you speak correctly. So you use them in a correct way. So in the last part, it says, to make this sentence correct, we could change the adjective to an adverb. He drove quickly. Now the sentence describes how he was driving. So this is another interesting thing. You can transform adjectives into adverbs. Quick, quickly, right? So not all the adjectives can be transformed into an adverb just by adding ly. But many of them is possible, definitely is possible. Any questions with this one? Okay, so let's move on. We have other example here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sandra, could you please read this one? Yes, and I see quite to know where to put an adjective is a sentence. It will usually appear just before. The noun is described by constraints and other will usually appear right after the verbs is described. Describing. Very good. So this is another tip. It says here's an easy way to know where to put an adjective in a sentence. It will usually, look what it says, usually, not always usually appear just before the noun it's describing. So by contrast, another will usually appear right after the verb is describing. So the position is important. And there is, there, there is an example. It says green adjective, ravenously is an adverb. And you can say, I like green shops the most. I always eat ravenously. So look at that. Green is the adjective and goes 
before the noun shrubs. And in the other hand, ravenously is after the verb is describing. So that is a way for us to understand is this an adverb or is this an adjective? And uh, let me see. What is, do you know what is shrubs? Shrubs. Shrubs. What is shrubs? Does anybody know? Okay, shrub. Know. Yeah, don't worry, I can tell you. A shrub is like a, how can I say, like a plant that is smaller than a tree, you know? So there are plants that are not very small, but they are medium sized and they have a lot of leaves and things like that. So shrubs is like, 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 like a bush, like an ambush that is a shrub. So it's like a plant with a lot of leaves or, or maybe flowers that is medium size, okay? And the other question is, what, what is by contrast? When I say contrast, what is the meaning of that? What do you understand when I say by contrast? Mm -hmm. the opposite very well it's like in the other hand in a different yeah. way very good and mm -hmm. it says uh raven ravenously what is ravenously do you know um like uh hungry very, very good fast. very fast because you whenever you are hungry right when you are um, starving, that is the word, starving. And you eat very, very fat something because you are so hungry. So that is ravenously. So look at the example. I like green shrubs the most. I always eat ravenously. So in the same- Ravenously is fast. Fast and with a lot of hungry. It's like, mm, this is delicious. I want more, something like that. Yes. Quickly, quickly. Yeah, fast and with yeah. a lot of, uh -huh, with appetite. Good, very good. Teacher, how do you pronounce ravenously? Ravenously. Ravenously. Yeah, ravenously. Ravenously, thank no. you. You're welcome. Do you have any other question in this one? In this case, teacher, uh, Ravenously is the adverb of it. That is correct. Ravenously is describing it. And green right. is describing shrubs. Green is an adjective. And ravenously right. is an adverb. Right. Good, perfect. Any other question? Okay, so let's move on. So we have here uh, another one. Uh, let's see, Guadalupe, could you please read this one? No, why not? <laughs> um. <laughs> Are you okay? Uh, um, for tonally. Placement, placement, uh -huh. uh, placement, always tell you something is a uh, adverse or adjective. For example, is sassy is ad adjective or are adverb in the imagine below. Good. So it says, unfortunately, placement doesn't always tell you if something is an adverb or an adjective. For example, is sassy an adjective or an adverb in the image below? 
So there is like a picture that it says Alaka, Alaka vanished already. And it says the magician sure is sassy. So sassy here is an adverb or is an adjective. What do you think? Uh, well, maybe the first question is, what is sassy? Do you know what is sassy? It's like sarcasm. Like, uh... I'm sorry, I can hear. For me, sassy is, is, is adjective. Okay, yeah, adjective. Okay, we have an opinion here. And what is the meaning of sassy? Does anybody know? Okay, sassy is something, something rude. Okay. Yeah, sassy is like something that is full of life, full of energy, full of something like that. Sassy. Okay. So the sentence is that magician sure is sassy. So now the question is this an adjective or an adverb? Adjective. It's adjective because refers to the magician. Okay, so magician. here is the answer. It says, even though it's right next to a verb, is sassy is an adjective. So you are correct. That is good. Describe the, describe yeah. the person. Exactly. It's because it's describing the magician. And it says, and while adjectives are usually close to the words they describe, adverbs can move around more freely in a sentence. For example, you might see an adverb at the beginning of a sentence. So what it says here is that an adverb can be at the beginning of a sentence, in the middle, at the end. So the position sometimes is not telling us if this is an adverb or an adjective. It's better to understand the, the sentence. So for example, that magician should be sassy. So we're describing that magician, the person, the noun. And then we know this is an adjective. It's not another because the verb here is the verb is. But sassy is not describing the verb to be. It's describing that magician. So then we know this is an other. I'm sorry, an adjective. Okay. The, uh, what the example the adverb teacher? Uh, this, uh, well, an adverb can be, for example, quickly, um, fast is also adverb and adjective, uh, badly. Um, we're going to check some examples actually in the next slide, okay? So, okay. here we have, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see, uh, Susanna, could you please read this part? Okay. I don't see the, the first common adverb. Okay. Common adverbs and adjectives. A lot of adjectives and adverbs are. I know, listen, teacher. Yes, yeah, I can listen, but very slow. <laughs> A lot of adjectives and adverbs are actually based on the same word, which is one reason they are so difficult to, to, to tell apart. Here is a list of the adjectives and adverbs you, you will see the most. Okay, perfect. So that's what it says. A lot of adjectives and adverbs are usually based on the same word. So the base form of both the adjective and the adverb sometimes is the same word, which is one reason they're sometimes difficult to tell apart. So that's why sometimes we, we get confused. Is this an adverb? Is this an adjective? And here is a list of some of those that are very common. For example, real is an adjective. Uh, what, who can tell me an example with real as adjective? Say something, 
uh, feelings. Sensitivity is real. Okay, mm -hmm. that is a good example. Oh. Nice. Sensitivity is real. Very good. That the is class nice. Is real. The class is real. Uh huh. Very real. Okay, very good. So you can see that we are describing a noun, but with the other is really. Who can tell me an example with really? Really today it's rain. No, no listen. So it's like today it really rained. Yes. Very good. So in that case, it really rained. Really is describing rain. Very good. So that is another. Nice. So you can see the other one, late is an adjective. That is very easy. An example with late. Today I arrive late at work. Very good. Today I arrive late at work. Mm -hmm. I, I'm describing I. And then uh, in the adverb, what is going to be? Lately, how's it gonna be with lately? There is a funny one with this one. We can say, for example, lately I'm coming early. So you can say that one. Lately is like these days, right? I'm coming early. So the action that I'm coming, I'm arriving is the one that I'm describing. Good. An example with hard. Anybody? Hard as an adjective. My work is hard in this season. Very good. My work is hard in this season. My work in this case is not a verb. It's the noun of your job, right? Very good. Hardly. An example with hardly. That is another verb. I hardly ever go to the beach. Very good. There we are describing go, go to the beach. Mm -hmm. Nice, that's good. The next one is bad. That is very easy. What can be an example with bad? This is very bad. This is very bad. You're describing this. I don't know what is this, but that is what you're describing is the noun. Good, and badly, an example with badly as an adverb. Anybody? Maybe she was hurt very badly. Very good. She was hurt very badly. So we are describing how she was hurt, the verb hurt. Good. So we have more. We have must. Any example with must? The most class is today. Mm, we can say that one, yeah. The most of the class was fast, you can say. The most of the class is in English, for example. Good. Yeah. And with mostly? Anybody with mostly? Mm, the last week, uh, the students rest. Uh, Rest mostly. Okay, 
So it's like, we can say uh, last week, mostly of all the students rest, or uh, the students rest mostly all days. Something like that. Okay. Like, good. So the other one is easy. That is easy. Uh huh. Well, I tell you an example, right? That is easy. If I say that, I mean, we're describing that. That is easy. Or we can say that is easily understood. So easily is for understood. It's describing understood, the way that you understand something. Quick, any example with quick? She, she quit typing. Typing letter? Uh, she, could you please repeat? She quit type a letter? Type, you say type, uh, maybe it's write a letter, right? Um, uh, write, write a letter. You can say she's quick. She uh, she's quick. quick. She's quick when she writes a letter. Maybe something like that is, is correct. She is quick when she writes a letter. And with quickly, how's it gonna be? Anybody? Maybe the vacation was quickly. And that is so true. Vacation ends so quickly sometimes. <laughs> okay, okay, we have more that are slow, slowly, clear, clearly, hopeful, hopefully, good, and uh, well. So as you can see, not all the adverbs ends in L-Y. So for example, the in, last one, good and well. In other position, uh, uh, study in this sentence, in other? Yeah, we say, we checked before, as you remember, that the no, most of the yes. time, yeah, the most of the time is after the verb. But an adverb can have different positions depending on what we want to say. So it's possible to have different positions. After, in the, after the verb, uh, adverbs. That's the thing. Sometimes the is usually after the verb, but not always. You can put the adverb no, in many not positions. Necessary. Not necessary. Yeah. Okay. So that is the thing. Let's check some other details about this one. Um, Okay, let's see. Um, Pamela, could you please read this part? Hello, Pamela. Hello, sorry. Aya, could you please read the, this, the first part? Uh, after this, and in uh, why? L -Y. There, there are some activities to do actually, and and why as you can see in the examples below. What a lovely sweater! Sweater. Uh, that's a lively story. There. He's quite a silly man. That was a lively party. Her mistakes were rather 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 closely. Okay, very good. So yes, there are many adjectives. Adjectives. Look at this. Adjectives that end in ly. So not all the words that end in ly are adverbs. Sometimes they are adjectives. For example, it says there are some adjectives that do actually end in ly, as you can see in the examples below. What a lovely sweater. So lovely is describing the sweater. So that is an adjective. Remember, that is the most important part. What is describing? If it's describing a verb or another adjective or another adverb is going to be an adverb. If it's describing a noun is an adjective. So in this one it says, what a lovely sweater. 
Lovely is describing sweater. So it's an adjective. Ha, that's a lively story. Lively is describing story. It's an adjective. He's quite a silly man. Silly is describing man. That was a lively party. Lively is describing party. And the last one, her mistake proved rather costly. So costly is describing the mistake. So that is an adjective. So the most important thing is that you understand what is describing. Whenever you identify that one, you can tell that if it's an adjective or an adverb. Question for everybody, what is lovely? Beautiful, right? It's something that you say, oh my goodness, I want that, good. The other one says likely, likely story. Ha, ah, that's a likely story. What is likely? It's possible, teacher. It's possible. It's something that sounds true, right? It sounds like, yeah, that might be happening. Good. Silly, what is silly? Maybe something, how do you say, imprudent? I don't know. Imprudent, yeah, you can say that yeah. one, silly, like, uh, yeah, it's like not that smart, right? Good. Lively, what is lively? Something real. Something real, something full of life, something like with full of color or energy. And the last one, it says her mistake proved rather costly. Do you know what is rather, right? What is rather? Does anybody know what is rather? Most. Must, yeah, it's like preference, right? I rather go, uh, I rather be on the beach, for example. So that is, I prefer something like that. In this case, her mistake proved rather costly. Is that that mistake is going to cost something? It's going to be a price to pay. Okay, the other one is going to be for Ricardo. Could you please help us reading this one? Hello, Ricardo. Not possible. Okay, uh, Lourdes, could you please help us read the last part? Okay, adverbs that don't end in life. In this paragraph? Yes, please. Okay. Likewise, or likewise, there are many adverbs that don't end in like, as you can see in the examples below. I was very excited to see him. She played well. Come here often. I think you acted too fast. Sometimes things just don't work out. Good. So... Yes, so some of the adverbs also they don't end in a way, as we say before. Uh, likewise, there are many adverbs that don't end in a way, as you can see in the examples below. I am very excited to see him. She played well. Come here often. I think you act too fast. Sometimes things just don't go work out. So all those are examples of adverbs that are different different ending and ly it's not ly definitely okay what is workout anybody it says sometimes things just don't work out 
non function it doesn't function exactly it doesn't function the way that we want very good so i believe that you are very familiar with these others uh, any questions on this one questions no good so let's check the other one uh let's see michelle could you please read this one i guess it's not possible okay let's see what part uh, I'm sorry. what part yeah here where it says you can also ah okay you can also place an ad adverb between the word to and a verb this is called as split infinitive in the past this was considered a serious grammatical error but it's commonly used and accept it today. Very good. For example, go ahead. Yeah. Today, I swear to bre bravely do what no man has done before. Before rake my entry yard. Very good. Perfect. Thank you, Michelle. So, yes, it says you can also place an adverb between the word to in a verb. This is called a split infinitive. In the past, this was considered a serious grammatical error, but it's commonly used and accepted today. So what is that? That you are going to put the adverb between two and the verb. So in the past, that was not possible, but now it's possible. Grammar changes. And there is an example. Today, I swear to bravely, and that is the adverb, I swear to bravely do what no man has done before, break my entire job. <laughs> That's a good one, it's like a joke. Okay, so uh, let's see. Do you understand this part that you can put, the position of the adverb can be between to and a verb, to do. So you can put the adverb there. So that is the only thing that we are explaining here. What is swear? I swear. What is to swear? Use. Use. Okay. Yeah, it's like, like a promise, right? It's stronger than a promise. Swear. I swear to bravely. Bravely is courageous, right? Do what no man has done before. Rake my entire yard. Do you know what is rake? Does anybody know what is rake? Okay, rake is when we use this in the garden. When we broom. The tool. Yeah, it's when we when we clean the garden with this tool, we rake. So do you do you get it? Clean, clean, similar it's rake. Sure. Yeah, rake yeah. is similar to clean, but with this tool. It's very important that whenever we say I'm going to rake, we use right. this. Right, only uh, uh, tools, tools, only with tools. This. Only with this. I mean, if you use a broom, you are brooming. It's like right? a rastrillo. Yeah, like that. So you when, are going to rake. When the jar has uh, leaves. Exactly. Many leaves, okay. So when you are going to do that, that action is rake. Okay. So if somebody says to you, go and rake the garden. Oh, that's not good. Oh my God. <laughs> the action, the action, the clean, the action, the clean. Exactly. It's the action of cleaning the garden from the leaves and okay. Okay. plants and things that you might have cut. So things like that. Good, good. Okay. Do you have any questions on this one? No questions. Okay, we're going to uh, make the pause. An hour has finished already, imagine. So now we're going to check the attendance. 
Ok. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martínez Flores. Ana Selmi Chévez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López. Car Flores. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. I'm here. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here, teacher. Good. Osmin Baires Solórzano. Present teacher. Good. <coughs> Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Very good and present. Good. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good. Okay, we are going to continue. So we're going to continue with the book, actually. Okay, so we are in unit number four, which is very good. So uh, the name of this unit is inventory. I know that you really like these kind of things about warehouse and all of the stuff. So we're going to continue speaking about inventory and some other stuff, okay? So it says unit four, I will be able to explain the relevance of an effective inventory management, of course. And the number one says, let's start. Aha, question for everybody. Does your company handle items with expiration dates? Uh -huh. Yes, in my company, yes. Really? Because it's raw materials. Okay, raw materials. Uh, this expiration date is a month, three months. How long is it? Um, common, commonly is for one year. One year. Is the, the beauty life. Very good. That is interesting. Good. The next question it says, what happens to products that go out of season or become irrelevant in the market? What do you think happens with them, everybody? It's very bad with the company. Uh, for me, when it's irrelevant in the market because uh, the product do doesn't have uh, um profit for example because uh, generally the company sells the product with discount uh, to to move or or other strategy for the products that is true so if that happens the company is going to lose money right so that is not good. 
is a big, big problem. Okay, so uh, we're going to check about the conversation. It says, Sarah is asking Ramon some tips on the basics of inventory control. Read the conversation and take turns practicing with a partner. I'm going to read the conversation first so you check the pronunciation. It's important for you to check pronunciation, okay? So it says, how does inventory management work, Ramon? You need to have enough products in your inventory to sell to your customers when they want it. But you don't want to have too much in your inventory or you will be paying a lot of money to have it stored. Oh, well, I was thinking of investing in some new cases for the L Phone X. Don't do it. Now that the L Phone X is on stores, you will not sell much. That's one of the problems with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you thought you could sell more than you did and there's a change in the market, you might end up paying for products you can't sell. Any questions on pronunciation? No questions. Good. Let's practice then. Osmin and Sandra, please. Okay. Mr. You, Sarah, please. Sandra, please. Hello, Sandra. Are you here? Sandra is not here, I guess. Okay, Guadalupe, could you please help us wing? Okay. Um, how does inventory manager management work, Ramon? You need to have enough product in your inventory to sell to your customer when they want it. But you then want to have too much in your inventory or you will be buying a lot of money to have its story. Oh, well, I was thinking of inv investing is some new case for the iPhone X. Don't do it. No, that the iPhone X is on story. You will not sell much. That's one of the problem with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you could you could sell more than you all. Excuse me, good. And there is a change in the market. You might end in up buying for product for can sell. Very good, perfect. Now Jancy and Lourdes. Okay. How does okay. entry management work, Ramon? You need to have enough product in your inventory to sell to your customer when they want, want it. But you don't want to have too much in your inventory or you will be paying a lot of money to have it stored. Oh, well, I was thinking of, of investing in some new case for the Elphone X. Don't do it. Now, the, now that the Elphone X is on the store, you will not sell much. That's one of the problems with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you thought you could sell more than you did and there is a change in the market, you might end up paying for products you can sell. Very good. 
Now, Michelle and Ada Patricia. <clears throat> You start, Michelle. Yes. Okay. Okay. How does inventory management work, Ramon? You need to have enough product in your inventory to sell to your customer when they want it, but you don't want to have too much in your inventory, or you will be paying a lot of money the to to have is a story. Oh, well, I was thinking of investing in some new cases for the L phone X. Don't, don't do it. Know that the L phone X is on a store you will not sell much. That's one of the problem with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because the stores you could sell more than you did. And there is change in the market you might and and are paying for products you can sell. Very good, perfect. Now Gloria and Rose. Okay. Okay, Gloria. I'm sir. Okay. Okay. How does inventory management work, Ramon? You need to have enough products in your inventory to sell to your customers when they want it. They want it. But you don't want to have too much in your inventory or you will be paying a lot of money to have it stored. Oh, well, I was thinking of investing in some new case for the iPhone X. Don't do it. Now, that the Alphone X is on the stores, you will not sell much. That's one of the problems with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you thought you could sell more than you did, and there is a change in the market, you might end up paying for products you can't sell. Very good, perfect. Now, Ophelia and uh, sell me. You feel? Yes. I was just inventory money for Ramon. You need to have enough product in your inventory to sell to your customer when they want it. But you don't want to have too much in your inventory or you will be paying a lot of money to have in stock. Oh, well, I was, I think, was inv investing in some I need cash for the telephone X. Don't do it. Now that the old phone X is on the stores, you will not sell much. That's one of the problems with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you thought you could sell more than you did, and there is a shame in the market, you might end up paying for product you can sell. Very good, perfect. Now, Nelson and Carla. How does inventory management work, Ramon? Hello, Nelson. Vacation, Ramon. Sure. Okay. You hear? I can hear, yeah, right now a little bit. Okay. You need to have a now product in your inventory to serve to your customer when they want it, but you don't want to have too much in your inventory or you will be paying a lot of money to have it in store. 
Oh, well, I was thinking of investing in some new cases for the Airphone X. Don't do it. Now that the Airphone X is on story, you will not sell much. That's one of the problems with inventory matching when you have too much inventory because you talk, you call sell more than you did and there is a change in the market you meet and you pay you pay for products you can't sell very good nice now sandra and jancy sell me okay how does inventory management work ramon you need to have enough products in your inventory to sell to your customer when they when it. But you don't want to have too much in your inventory or you will be paying a lot of money to have it stored. Oh, well, I was thinking of investing in some new case for the Elphone X. Don't do, don't do it now that the Elphone X is on storage. You will not sell much. That's one of the problems with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you so so, you could sell more than you did. And there is a change in the market. You might end up paying for product you can sell. Very good. Now, Zulma and Pamela. Okay. Uh, start, Pamela. Hello, Pamela. Hello, uh, Sarah, right? Yeah, yeah. How does inventory management work, Ramon? You need to have enough product in your inventory to sell to your customer when they want it, but you don't want to have too much in your inventory or you will be paying a lot of money to wow. having it stored. Wow. Oh, well, it was thinking on, of investing in some new cases for the Elphone X. Don't do it. Now that the Elphone X is on the stores, you will not sell much. That's one of problems with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you grow, you could sell more than you did. Is, and there is a change in the market. You may end up paying for product you can sell. Very good. Now, Ricardo. And let's see. Ophelia. Okay. No, Ophelia, you did it right. No, so then Ricardo and Adriana. Adri. Okay. okay. US. Huh? You start? Okay. Aha. Yeah, Ricardo. Yeah, Ricardo. Okay. okay. Uh, who does inventory manager work, Ramon? Huh? Um, excuse me. No me, me, sir, or you? No, you're second. You're you... wrong. Okay. And you need to have enough product in your inventory to sell in your customer when they wait. But you don't want to have too much in your inventory. Or you will be paying a lot of money to have it stored. Oh, will I was think of investigation investigation in some new cassette for the live phonics. 
don't do it. Now that the cell phone X, X is on a store, you will not sell much. That's one of the problems with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because, because you don't thought you could sell more than you did. And there and there is change in the market. You might end up paying for products you can sell. Okay, very good. I believe everybody did it already, right? Is somebody missing? All right. Okay. So let's check some words. Inventory management work. Uh, let's see, enough. Um, there are not many, to be honest with you. Cases, what is a case? Cases for the L phone X, what is that? The protection for the phone. That is it, right? It's the one that we buy to protect the cell phone. Good. And then it says, uh, sell that much. Thought. You thought you could sell more. What is thought? Do you remember? The path of the think. The path of think. So remember the pronunciation is thought. I thought. And there is no other, I guess. Do you have any questions? Okay, so let's check the questions below. Why is it important to have enough products in your inventory? What do you think? According to the conversation, why is it important to have enough products in your inventory? For sale. Sorry? For sale. Exactly. Actually, it says there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's you need. To... I'm sorry? Yeah, it says there, you need to have enough products in your inventory to sell to your customers when they want it. Good. Question number two says, is it a good idea to have an excess of inventory? What do you think according to the, to the conversation? Don't want to have too much in your inventory or you will be paying a lot of money to have a store. Very good, that is it, right? If you have a lot of inventory, you will be paying a lot of money. And that is something that we don't want. Number three, it says, what happens if you have too much inventory and market trends suddenly change? What's the answer for this? That's one of the problem with mental management. Definitely is a problem. Yeah. Paying for products. Okay, that is it. You, it says you might end up paying for products you can't sell. That is not good, right? So. You, when you have products that you are not able to sell. Okay, we're going to watch some videos. -da. Remember that as usual uh, on the videos, we're going to listen, pay attention, and then comment. Provide your feedback on this one. So here we go. Okay. Welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday, where we discuss inventory management issues, and we keep the concepts small enough that we can from Marketing Officer at Fishbowl, and today we're going to talk about what is inventory management. Now this drawing here is a very simplified version of what inventory management is, but it's good enough to get our point across. Um, 
Let's start out over here. We get goods delivered that come into receiving. All these items in receiving eventually have to be put away on the shelves. Um, and then later on, we're going to pull these items. Some of these items might be pulled to be uh, used in a manufacturing process, or we might be involved in wholesale distribution and we'll just pull these goods and we'll send them out to our customers so that they can do things with them. Regardless, uh, wh whether you're a manufacturer and you've got a finished good or you're sending out parts, all those pieces need to be shipped out at some point. Uh, a lot of companies will actually do a manual process to keep track of all of this and accomplish all their business processes. Some are using an automated process. Let's talk about the manual process here for a second. This is very labor intensive. We've got a lot of data that we need to keep track of. This is only a small sampling of the data. Lot numbers, serial numbers, cost quantity, dates for production, expiration, and shipment. When those goods come into receiving, that data needs to be captured for efficiency purposes and keeping track of your inventory. Um, you move that from receiving over to the shelves and you've got to update all this information that you're tracking. When you pull this, you've got to update it again. So again, if it's a manual process, you're involved a lot in a lot of labor intensive activity to move these items all the way through to pick pack and then ship them. That manual process is very labor intensive. In an automated process, when this truck delivers the goods, you have a couple options. One, if it's a large shipment, you can move it right into receiving and then scan it with a barcode scanner and move it into these locations, scan these locations, and now your automated system knows exactly where all that inventory is. If it's a smaller shipment that arrives, you can skip this whole receiving area and just barcode it right into the places that you put it on the shelves and you know exactly where it is, how much you have, and it's there when you need it. Now when you pull it off the shelves, again, you'll barcode it. It's updating your system. It's going through the manufacturing process or you're pulling it for distribution. But this whole pick, pack, and ship process that ends up here, you're tracking all of this through this automated system so that when it ships out the door, all of your inventory is dynamically updated and is real-time data, which ultimately gives you better information. So our final math here in our accounting terms is we want to increase our tracking efficiency. We want to do a much better job of tracking all the parts that go through your business. We want to de decrease the amount of time you spend doing that. And the result of this is you get much better business information. Now, to run your business, the better the information, the better the business decisions you can make. So having this automated system becomes very, very valuable because of the reports that you can get. Of course, with better uh, business information, better reporting, you get much greater efficiency and you reduce your costs and you have a much better run business. That's it for Whiteboard Wednesday. Join us again next week. Thanks. Okay, what did you get into this video? Uh -huh. Anybody? I only understand the process receiving the goods okay. uh, uh, receiving deliver the goods receiving putting away then distribution and the shipment <laughs> i understand only that <laughs> <laughs> you were speaking a little bit fast right yes <laughs> okay good perfect thank you rose anybody else's he talked about the forest that for um, inventory management, the first step was uh, delivery. The second is receiving uh, material or raw material. The number three is uh, put away or distribution and made up finally product and a for uh, is cheat cheatment very good perfect that is it any other person wants to share something i guess it was something that we know already right so we have checked all these units about 
3PL and uh, warehousing, many other things. So it's very similar. You receive products, you put them away. I mean, in receiving, you scan. He was saying also that is there are two ways. You can do it manually or automated with a system. And he says that if you do it manually, you require a lot of people. Right? You require, it's going to be labor intensive. So that is not that good because remember that probably if you do it manually things kinds of things, it's not going to be accurate. So that definitely is not good, right? Let's watch the other video. Let's see, pay attention and then you are going to tell me what you understood. How much inventory should I hold? One of the principles of supply of goods to a market is that companies hold enough stock to satisfy customer demand without holding too much. So intuitively, just the right quantities of stock to satisfy demand will minimise cost. However, when dealing with thousands of stock keeping units, the art of balancing demand with supply is intricate. It becomes even more complex when multiple storage facilities are used and customer service times are short or vary according to the critical nature of products. The best way to understand how much stock you should have is to determine how much it costs you. As a guide, inventory costs vary from 2.4 to 16% of sales revenue. You might like to check your costs before embarking on a cost reduction exercise. In your endeavour to reduce costs, it's important to understand what are the typical costs involved. Well, here are the areas that you should examine. Facility costs. These are holding costs which include rental, mobile and static equipment, utilities and compliance costs. For example, for dangerous goods or pharmaceutical products. Human capital. This is the cost of labour to manage stock. For example, moving it, handling it and counting it. Finance costs. When capital is invested in inventory, the cost of finance is interest or the lost opportunity of vesting capital elsewhere. Management costs. These are white collar personnel and information technology charges. Procurement costs. These relate to the cost of purchasing, including inbound transport. Inventory turnover. As a rule of thumb, the faster the stock turns over, the less it will cost you to hold. However, stock turns in some businesses, such as spare parts, will be very low, say one to three times per annum. Whereas stock turns in a fast moving consumer goods business can be as high as 20 to 30 times per annum. Regardless, increasing stock turns for any business to an optimal level is beneficial. Stock accuracy. If stock records are wrong, vast amounts of time and expense can be wasted sorting them out. Ideally, stock accuracy should be 98% or better. This means that 98 times out of 100, the stock on system actually matches the stock in the storage bin. Lower percentages are always linked to higher operating costs. Pillage and ullage. Unfortunately, theft occurs, as does unexplained stock losses and damage. The cost of these must be factored into your analysis. Service levels. Too rigid or a single service level approach can cost dearly. Companies that will offer goods supplied anywhere, anytime, in any quantity, at the fastest delivery time possible, will have higher levels of stock than those who offer a service level specifically tailored to customer needs. So in all of this, what is the solution? Know thy customer service levels well. And note, levels are plural. Smart companies segment their supply to three service classes. Critical goods. These are products that are needed quickly, such as for medical or emergency. Non-critical goods. These are products needed within a reasonable time frame, but are not necessarily urgent, such as computers, household white goods and building materials. Scheduled delivery. These are goods which can be built or customised for particular customers and delivered according to agreed delivery times. This applies to some technology products and also furniture. A further delineation 
may be made between retail, wholesale or end-user customers. In any case, it pays to start with a good understanding of customer needs before advancing to the next stage. Now that you know the inventory cost drivers, what are some of the strategies that can be used to better manage inventory? Here are just a couple. Firstly, vendor managed inventory. Some companies involved in manufacturing integration or assembly rely on their vendors to manage their own stock until the goods are actually used on the production line. Under this arrangement, the manufacturer doesn't have to carry any stock and only pays for the stock when used. This strategy can save the manufacturer money, but can consequently load certain costs upon vendors. This apparent misalignment of costs between manufacturer and the supplier is beneficial to end customers, as the total cost to supply in fact becomes lower. Another strategy is postponement logistics. This is common to many international manufacturers and it's the process of postponing finals, final assembly of goods until demanded in the offshore market where they will be sold. This enables efficient storage of a smaller range of goods while offering a fast response time to the designated market. It has been used in the fashion industry to good effect and also in industries such as appliances, computers and the gaming. With a large number of companies moving manufacturing offshore to South and Northeast Asia, postponement is becoming more common and feasible for smaller markets such as Australia. So, from what I have covered in this session, you will be aware that inventory management is a challenging and inexact science, which should be approached carefully to ensure full understanding and application of the most appropriate supply chain strategy. I wish you every success as you scrutinise this important aspect of your business. Okay, what did you understand on this one? To start with a good understanding. He talking about the items that compound the cost of inventory and he mentioned some strategies that you can implement if you need reduced cost. <laughs> very good, that was very nice. Good, perfect. Any other person? He is talking about the important, importance um, of the management of the inventory. Uh, that is very important, the op optim optimal level, optimal level about um, he, he, he told about the different costs related to the inventories and that the management inventory is a challenge for the business. Very good, mm -hmm. perfect. Thank you, Sammy. Nice. Anybody else? It's, it's, it's important control inventory, uh, different tools, um, important employees manager controlling processes. Processes, uh, cost, uh, quantity, uh, for the increased business. Very good, perfect. Yeah, there were lots of information here, right? A lot of things I discussed. Maybe for me, the most relevant was about this one, that is the costs. Because when you're talking about inventory management, you have to have a balance, right? About how, how many goods you are going to have in stock ready for sale, but not that much, right? There should be a balance. How you are going to identify how much inventory you are going to have. Of course, you are going to do the forecast of the selling, right? I believe that I'm going to sell 
this amount of products. But also you need to calculate the costs. That is very important. To check how many finished goods do, can I have that in the warehouse? And I like the way that he split the cost. I mean, facility cost. I mean, you have a warehouse with illumination, things that are a cost. Definitely that is important. Human capital, that is the people, the finance costs about, yeah, how it's going to be the impact. I mean, if you take this and you calculate that one, you will be able actually to identify what is the, the best amount of inventory that you can have. <coughs> that is a very good thing. Anybody else wants to add something else? <laughs> Okay, let's continue. Okay, so we have some vocabulary here. It says match the words related to inventory to their meaning. Well, first of all, we are going to read, okay? So let's see. Salmi, could you please read the, the first one? Yes, teacher. Uh, the eyes. A software, software system. Yeah, the definition, please. Okay. A software system used to keep record of inventory levels, orders, sales, and deliveries. Very good. So this, uh, this one is talking about a software system that is used to keep a record, so to check how many of something we have, how, how much inventory levels orders, sales, and deliveries we have. And on the left side, you see the name of the, of the um, definition, let's say, stock, inventory tracking, point of sale, that is the POS, restock, spoilage, par levels, first in, first out. So well, it might be a software system used to keep records of inventory levels, order sales, and deliveries. What do you believe? What it can be this software? Mm -hmm. Inventory tracking. Inventory tracking. Inventory tracking, yeah, that might be very good, perfect. Let's see, Osmin, could you please read the second one? Okay, hey, teacher. Replenish a store with spiders, stock or supplies. Very good. Replenish a store with fresh stock and supplies. Replenish, do you know what is replenish? Anybody? Replace, replace. Replace, yeah, it could be like replace, refill. Okay, so replenish a store with fresh stock and supplies. Which one is this one? Restock. 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 Yeah, definitely that is restock. Very good. Uh, Carla, could you please read the next one? Okay. The time and place where a retail transaction is completed. Okay, so the time and place where a retail transaction is completed. What it might be this one? Point of sale. Point of of. Sale. Oh, okay. Very good. So we agree on that one. The next one is going to be for, let me just check. Sulma, please. Okay, um, what, sorry? The fourth. Restore, rest of. Okay, and the other one? Items? Items. Items with expiration dates like food or even cosmetics that can become rotten or unsable if not sold in time. Okay. Items with expiration dates like food or even cosmetics that can become rotten 
or unusual if not sold on in time. Rotten, do you know what is rotten, anybody? When something, especially food, uh, is, oh my God, is, <laughs> uh, you can't eat because it doesn't taste good or smell good. Very good. It's ruined. Like, it's not good anymore. So that is rotten. Or unusual. I mean, you are not able to use that anymore. So which one is this one? Spoilage. Spoilage. Good. Okay. Um, Ada, could you please read the next one? The oldest inventory items are recorded as sulfurs. Very good. The oldest inventory items are recorded as sold first. Which one is this one? First in, first people. Very good. First in, first out, five four. It's a method. Very good. The next one is for Gloria. The merchandise keep in a warehouse and available for sale of this or distribution. Very good. Merchandise kept in a warehouse and available for sale or distribution. What is that? Stuck. Stuck. Very good. Perfect. It has been kind of easy. And the last one is for Sandra. The amount that should be available at any time for an item, item. When, when an item falls below, far it is replenished. Okay, good. The amount, so this is talking about the amount that should be the available amount. at any time for an item. When an item falls below par, it is replenished. What is that? Level. Power levels. Very good. Perfect. This was kind of easy. Good. And then it says, choose five of the terms above and write a sentence for each. No, we're not going to do that. Share. Let's see. And the rest is a conversation. No, we're not going to do that. Okay. So we are going to, to stop a little while and we're going to do free practice. Um, so for almost everybody, this was the first day after vacation that you go to work. How was your day today? Uh -huh. In my case, it was difficult because I had um, take how do you say, uh, yes, I, I have a lot of bending and I need to, to work. <laughs> yeah, Mondays after vacation sometimes are very hard, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> well, the good thing is that we almost finished the Monday, so that is nice. Yeah. Good. What time do you usually finish, Almi? Your job? Usually? Maybe 12, the middle. <laughs> really at midnight? Midnight, yeah. That is a lot. So when you finish the English class, you continue working? Yeah, in per hours. Mm -hmm. No way, that's, I mean, it's good, but also it's not good, right? So, because it's good, I mean, when yes, you have yes. a job and it's nice that you do things, but sometimes you're tired, right? Yes, it's tired, but I enjoy my free time. Time. <laughs> and what time do you usually wake up in the morning? Um, it's difficult for me. The 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 can you say because I I suffer of um, insomnia. Ah, insomnia. Insomniac. 
Insomniac. Uh, yeah. But I try to, to uh, rest for six hours. I try. Six mm -hmm. hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I mean, you have always been in so many care or it's been recently when you're working, when did that start? Yeah, it's, um, it's but for me it's, it's, it's normal, my, my schedule, the long hour for the work or for the study. Okay. Yes, during the week, I try to, to complete my, my work because the Saturday and Sunday for me, it's very important to share with my family. Yeah, that is very important. But I mean, the question is, when did that start? When you were a kid also, you had some problems to sleep? Uh, the kid, no. No. My problem began in maybe the university, yeah, okay. during the university. That makes sense, okay. And after, when I was mom, <laughs> the uh -huh. first years, my schedule more crazy. <laughs> I know, yeah, because kids, they demand time, right? Time, yeah. and you need to do, I mean, you want to do this and you need to do this and yeah, a lot of things going on. Yeah. So, but you, do you feel during the day, if you sleep only six hours, do you feel with energy, you feel fine? Yeah. 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 Every day for me, in the morning, I recharge my energy. Yeah. That is good. Perfect, that is nice. Perfect, thank you for your comments. You're welcome. <laughs> Let's take another person. Let's see how it goes. Uh, oh, uh, uh, uh. Well, the person not there, right? Let's see, Jancy. Yes. Hello, how are you? Um. A little sad. <laughs> really? Why is that? Yeah. Um, because this day was my it was my last day in my work. Really, my yeah. Sometimes go ahead. But tomorrow I start a new job. So you're starting a new challenge. Yes. <laughs> that is very good. So are you excited? I mean, I know that to leave a world with friends and colleagues is difficult, but also I believe that you are excited about tomorrow, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, I am a nervous. It's normally. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, when you are going to start something new, it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, the first time that you came to the English class, you were nervous, right? It's like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? Or when you move to your new house, or when you, yeah, when you change your job, and that happens sometimes. You're thinking a lot of things, but I'm very sure that everything is going to be very nice. And uh, so, uh, but you're going to do a similar job? Uh, see, yes, uh, I know the process, but it's new, new place, new person. Uh, it's, it's shame, shame. For me, but the process, I know. Uh, no, it's similar, but I, I 
No sé, tengo miedo, ¿cómo se dice miedo? I'm afraid. Miedo. Yeah, that happens. That happens, you know. Um, all the time, all the time. For example, when I started to teach English classes for Insafor, I was nervous. I was thinking, oh my goodness, what I'm going to do? What kind of jokes? I mean, I had experience by teaching English uh, for a long time, but in, in, in the, not online. So this was my first time that I was teaching uh, in a video conference via Zoom. But at the end, was good. So I believe that if you know what you need to do and everything is going well, you need to go for it, definitely. Yeah. But I not continue doing the English class in, in English for work. I guess that is possible. The only thing that you need to do is to speak with the people here in the academy. I mean, because you are going to have another job. I mean, it's not that you don't work. So my advice for you is to, to chat with somebody at Inglés Corporativo so they can tell you what to do. So you can do that. Uh, but my contract is different. I don't cotizar, cotizar it. Uh, so you won't have the insurance and the AFP. Yes. I see. Well, <laughs> yeah, that is a little bit different, but my advice again is to for you to chat. Chat with somebody and listen to what they, they can do for you. Sometimes there is always a solution, so you can give it a try. You can give it a shot. Okay. Good, perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Jancy. Ophelia. Hello, teacher. How are you? Hi, thank you, teacher. How was your vacation? Um, vacation in a house, descansing. Rest, you rested a lot? No, teacher. No, <laughs> sometimes you work more, right? Sometimes yes. there are many things that you want to do. And now that you have the vacations, it's the right time for us to do something. Very good. And did you go <laughs> out? I mean, did you go to a place? Did you go to the beach or the mountain? No, you didn't go out? No. Okay. But did you do something different? Yes. What did you do? I know this. No? No. Why not? When is your birthday? September. September. What date? Um, three. The third. Good. I have a very good friend of mine that she, her birthday is on the 2nd of September. Very close. Do you do something special on your birthday? November and four. Ah, so you have two birthdays, that's good. Yes. Nice, that is good. <laughs> I was reading something very interesting, you know. Uh, I was reading that when anybody came to ask that question to Galileo Galilei, do you know who, who is Galileo Galilei? A very famous astronomer, right? Very famous for many things. But when somebody came and asked, how old are you? Uh, when, yeah, how old are you? Uh, about his birthday and things like that. And he used to say, I'm 10 years old. And then everybody were like, oh, 10 years? That's not possible. And he used to say, uh, no, you know, what I do is I tell the years that I still have to live. Not the years that I lived already but the ones that are ahead, the ones that are in front. 
because those are the ones that I have to count every day that I still have to live are the most important, not the days that I spend. I mean, those are good, but I need to live for the future, right? So that was very interesting, I guess. I don't know how old am I? <laughs> I hope a lot. Okay, uh, do you have kids, Ophelia? Do you have kids? No kids, no babies. Ah, okay. I thought you had kids because I sometimes hear a voice there. But maybe somebody else's, right? Where do you live, Ophelia? Where do you live? In San Salvador. San Salvador, okay. Where in San Salvador? Ah, you have a dog. Cuscat and Cinco. Okay. What is the name of your dog? What is the name of your dog? What is the name of your dog? Santa Tecla. Santa Tecla. Okay. <laughs> He's barking in English, I guess, right? He's like, yes, I want to speak. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you, Ophelia. Okay. Okay, my friends, we're going to finish the first class of this week. Remember that on Friday, we are going to finish. Remember that we need to finish all the platform before the class of Friday. So before the English class on Friday, we need to finish. Also remember that you are going to receive the uh, INSA Forb survey, right? And also remember that you don't have to do it. We are going to do it together. You have experience on that one. So I believe that. But anyways, I, I will remember. Yep. Finally, finally class this week? Yeah, Friday. Okay. And then we go to Pizza Hut. Ah, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, this week. Ah, this week. <laughs> yeah, this week is the last, the last week of this this model, of course. Okay, my friends, um, do you have any questions before we finish? Only in the platform, in the unit three. Mm -hmm. um, I have a. What can I say? I have a bad, not a bad, I have a low punctuation, mm -hmm. but the answer for me is correct. Mm -hmm. But the platform doesn't uh, assign me the 20 points, only 15. But uh, which exercise was it? Do you ah, remember? It's the 3.9. 3.9. Yeah, mm, I guess in the, that has a problem. In the yeah. right, um, I give up. I give up and I say, okay, that's okay. <laughs> Let's see. Let me just check here. Is the exercise of the punctuation, mm -hmm. Rosie? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, is the. It's a uh, reading, right? The procedures about the safety, uh, the safety procedures in the mm -hmm. warehouse. Let's check when, it out, okay? Yeah. In a few when seconds. you choose, when you choose some some items, this one, right? Yes. Okay. Mm. So it says read about yes. warehouse safety procedures, then classify them into the following categories by selecting the letter. Okay. So yeah, these are the answers. Yeah, Unify AG. Ah, uh, yes. AG. B H. C E. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's number four. Uh huh. Yeah. I got it, and I have 15 points. Ah, it's because of this. Why? Oh, my goodness. The three and the number four, they're together. Oh, my God. Okay. Mm. <laughs> okay. That's the reason why. Okay, I'm going to report it, and hopefully it's going to be fixed ah, okay. by 2028. But okay. anyway, I'm going to report it. Yeah, I didn't okay, know. Okay, that's the way. Okay. Yeah, right. that is the reason why. Don't worry. I'm going okay, to report yeah. it, but anyways, I don't think they're going to fix it very okay. soon. Yeah, I give up. <laughs> and I say, yeah. that's okay. <laughs> but now you know the reason why. I'm sorry yeah. about that one, but I'm yeah. going to report anyway. Okay.
Good, good. Any other question? No, sir. Okay, before I check the attendance, since I believe everybody had done the one on one thing. No, Jancy, it's your turn. I remember. So, Jancy, today is the one on one for you, okay? Now I'm going to check the attendance. Okay. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Yes. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen mm -hmm. López Flores. Present. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Good, Mayra, good night. Good night. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present teacher. Good night. Good night. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good night. Present. Good night. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Good night. Present. Ok. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good night. Good night. Jancy Lisbeth Hernández. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. <coughs> okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be today with you. See you tomorrow, dreaming English and practice the most that you can. See you. Bye bye. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. Hello, Jancy. How are you? Hello. I, I stop for this session. Okay. So let me ask you, how do you feel that you are moving on with the English classes? Um, ¿Cómo me siento? Sí, ¿cómo se siente? ¿Siente que va avanzando, que va aprendiendo? Uh, okay. Mm, quizás... ¿Lo puedo decir en español? Por supuesto. En este módulo estoy avergonzada porque no le he dado como... No es que no le haya dado importancia, sino que he tenido muchas actividades simultáneamente que me han consumido mucho tiempo. Entonces ha sido difícil. Sí he tratado lo más que he podido, pero no... No, ya no, <laughs> ya no puedo, porque okay. mi, bueno, mi trabajo eh, es como normal, digamos, pero inicié un nuevo negocio, este, he estado en otros procesos de una beca, por ejemplo, he estado en el proceso de un nuevo trabajo, he estado pendiente de un negocio que ya tenía y la clase de inglés yo ya. Me siento cansada, entonces quizás por eso solo quiero terminar eso. Y si sí quisiera seguir, pero ya se me hace difícil. Ok. Bueno, yo lo entiendo, ¿verdad? Sí, yo sé que lo bueno es que tiene muchos proyectos, eso es interesante. Entonces, eh, quizá mi recomendación es que siga practicando, que siga viendo cosas en inglés, leyendo en inglés. A veces si ya no se puede seguir, pues en las clases, 
eh, si no se sigue practicando, eh, no es que se olvide, pues, pero va, que, va perdiendo la, la práctica. Entonces. Y pues no sé si, porque en el nuevo trabajo este, no voy a estar cotizando. Entonces, como uno de los requisitos es que esté cotizando el IS y voy, mi contrato va a ser por honorario, ya no voy a poder seguir en este curso. Entonces, no sé si usted sabe eh, si siempre voy a tener acceso a la plataforma o no. Porque, porque a veces lo que he hecho es que voy a la plataforma y aquellas clases del principiante me pongo a, a repasarlas o algo. Uh -huh. Pero no sé si, si sabe. Dice que ahí sí desconozco. Y lo que yo le recomiendo es lo siguiente. Al terminar las clases, el viernes, ya después del viernes, usted puede consultar, consultar directamente con con las personas con las que tiene contacto aquí de la de inglés corporativo para comentarle lo que usted hace y todo, lo, lo, cómo va a estar la situación y ellos le van a dar una mejor información. Ahora, igual puede practicar de muchas maneras, ¿verdad? Viendo películas, videos, cantando en inglés, puede hacer muchas cosas y mi recomendación es de que siga practicando lo más que pueda. Sí, porque de hecho, este, lo, ahora lo necesito más antes porque por las exigencias del trabajo y ahora o sea ni he iniciado y ya está recibiendo muchos documentos y todos en inglés entonces algunas cosas les comprendo la esencia yo o sea comprendo lo que me quieren decir pero si yo por ejemplo quiero eh, eh, como comprender textualmente algo alguna palabra que no sé como que me cambia la idea que tengo. No sé. okay. Pero hay muchas cosas que, que sí, pues porque yo inicié prácticamente de cero. porque y, y ha sido un reto porque a mí nunca me gustó en la escuela, <ríe> en la U, nada. O sea, yo, yo sí era aplicada, pero yo no he tenido esa habilidad lingüística de los de los idiomas, pero este, me he esforzado y siento que he avanzado, o sea, ya no me siento tan, este, tan en ser y de hecho trato de, mido mi nivel de comprensión comparado a una persona que no, que, que no está en el curso, pues, que no practica okay. y sí, he notado algún avance pero obviamente no al nivel de Rosalina o de Servis, porque no sé, no, me da mi temor es, y yo sé que es lo peor que, lo que debo evitar, pero mi temor es hablar <ríe> y que se rían de mí. No, pero no, no se preocupe, no nos reímos. Bueno, yo lo que recomiendo entonces es que siga practicando y que sí hable con, con las personas acá del en el corporativo, a ver qué le pueden decir, ¿verdad? A ver qué, qué, qué información le pueden dar y explica su situación y a ver, ¿verdad? Porque ya le falta muy poco, pues, y sería bonito terminar. Pero si no puede, pues, al menos les plantea para, para que ellos le den más información. Uh -huh. Sí, voy a hablar con ellos. Perfecto. Este... Ok. Gracias por el apoyo en todo. No, estamos a la orden. Cuídense mucho y cualquier cosa, pues, ya sabe que ahí estamos en el chat. Muchas gracias. Feliz noche. Good night. Good night.